Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about reliability pillar of AWS well architected framework. So we have discussed in some other video about A AWS well architected framework. Uh, so this actually helps cloud architects build secure, high performing, resilient and efficient infrastructure for a variety of application and workloads. So this is by definition that a cloud architects need some guidelines, some best practices to come up with an architecture in the cloud. So this is the one which we all need. So well-architected framework provides a set of questions and design principles across six pillars. And uh, we are going to discuss the reliability pillar in this video. The reliability pillar tries to ensure that the workload performs its intended function correctly and consistently when it is expected to. So workload means we have a collection of resources and code that delivers business value. So workload can be like we can take an example of any website, marketing website, let's say, or maybe some analytic platforms, for instance. So we want to ensure that workload performs its intended function correctly and this is covered by reliability pillar. And this pillar also addresses the ability to operate and test the workload through its total life cycle. And if there are some failure in the system, of, if any failure occurs, then they should be able to recover from it, from it and they should also be mitigate disruptions. So the reliability pillar provides an, an overview of design principle, best practices and questions. So first we are going to discuss the five design principles for reliability pillar in, in the cloud. So first design principle is automatically recover from failure. Second is test recovery procedure is scale horizontally to increase aggregate workload availability stock casing capacity, manage change in automation. So automatically recover from failure implies that uh, we need to set up a system that monitors for KPIs of your business values, whatever key performance indicators are in your business, we need to monitor it. And when any of the KPI reads too low or too high, the monitoring system should automatically notify so that we can uh, or the system can recover itself and there can also be an automatic re automatic recovery system which can be triggered in in case of any problem it means this should be able to or the system should be able to recover or first means the system should be able to detect that when we need to have or we need to initiate some recovery procedure test recovery procedures so this test recovery procedures that or this design suggests that we need to test how your system fails and validate your recovery procedures. So here we can expose some of the failures or some of the shortcomings in the system or the workload and rectify before a real failure scenarios. So means we, we act actually proactively. Scale horizontally to increase aggregate workload availability. So here suggests that we, we should replace one large re, uh, resource with multiple smaller resources to reduce the impact of single failure on the overall work. So this one very much clear that instead of just using some large resources and if that fails then system will be down. So in that case we should be implementing or we should be using multiple resources so that the impact should be distributed. So that should not be kind of single point of failure. So distribute requests across multiple smaller resources to ensure that they don't share a common point of failure. Fifth design principle is stock gazing capacity. So in the cloud, you can monitor demand and workload utilization and automate the addition or removal of resources. It means we should not be Rigid, or we should not be static or stationary in just uh, deploying the resources. We can monitor our demands and as per the demand, we can increase or decreases 
uh, the resources to maintain the optimal level to satisfy demand without over or under provisioning so sometimes let's say we have more hard disk it's not good so we should just be looking at the demand we can increase or decrease the number of ec2 instances or hard disk like that so for example manage change in automation so automation should be used to introduce change changes in the infrastructure automation is important and if we have we should be using and these changes that need to be managed include changes to automation which can be tracked and reviewed and then there are four best practice areas for foundational questions in the reliability uh, uh, for the reliability in the in the cloud so now these foundational questions uh, actually are covered by these i mean best practice areas one is foundation workload architecture change management failure management so in foundation these are the foundational questions and how do you manage service quotas and constraints so with these kind of foundational question we can actually monitor we will have some best practices and we will have some context where we can have further details in, and i'll put the disk uh, the document which i'm going to use here in these all videos i'll put the link of that document in the description section so you can go to see further details about this foundation that how this question is addressed but with this or uh, to address this we just ask the question that how do you manage service quotas and constraints and how do you plan your network topology second best practice area is workload architecture and the foundational question this kind of i mean in this is how do you design your workload service architecture how do you design interaction in a distributed system to prevent failure and how do you design interaction in a distributed system to mitigate or withstand failure and then we have the change management how do you monitor workload resources because workload resources if there is some change needed and how you are going to monitor them because during monitoring maybe you need some more resources and maybe you need to reduce some resources so question is how do you monitor workload resources how do you design your workload to adapt to changes in demand how do you implement those changes or that change and then fourth best practice area is failure management how do you back up data how do you use fault isolation to protect your workload how do you design your workload to withstand component failure how do you test reliability so you can get some idea that from these found foundational question we can have some best practices and this best practices have been collected by aws for us so that is actually a conclusion or some are the ideas which have been collected since many years and they have been collected in this well architected framework and they are very much helpful for us when we are coming up with the with our own architecture in the cloud and how do you plan for disaster recovery so we need to have we need to address all these questions and 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 these best practices available in the document will be very much helpful and uh, i think that's it for the discussion on reliability pillar i know this is very brief but you can go in the document there for further details but we try to discuss some of the design principles and best practice areas for reliability pillar in aws well architected framework and thank you thank you for your time hope to see you in some other video